Hi everyone, my name is Oliver, and today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. The high-profile case of Denise Dragon is a vivid example of how youthful maximalism, morbid jealousy, and passion for illegal substances can lead to tragedy and destroy three young lives at once. The oldest participant, and I'm not afraid of this word, the main culprit of this story, at the time of the tragedy, was barely 22 years old. The two girls whom he desperately tried to keep playing with their feelings were only 17 and 19 years old. Their love triangle didn't last long, leading to two pregnancies, manic stalking, and eventually cold-blooded murder. Mario Topinara was born in Spain in the suburbs of Madrid, a small town of Alcorcón, in 1996. The young man has never burdened himself with studying and finding a good job. In his 22 years, he lived in the house of his parents and interrupted by casual earnings. The main passion of the guy was graffiti. He drew perfectly, but could not apply his talent as an artist anywhere, being satisfied with small part-time jobs painting walls outside and inside buildings. Mario's main source of income was the sale of illegal substances. He did not do it himself, but found interested customers and brought them to a remote quarter of the city where his acquaintance who could get everything at the request of buyers. Tapanara received a good percentage of each such transaction, so he was interested in finding such people. It is not known whether the parents knew what their son was doing, but if they did, they obviously turned a blind eye. It should be noted that Mario had a bright appearance and bold character. He enjoyed authority among friends and a lot of popularity among the opposite sex. The young man skillfully used his charm, easily made acquaintances, and often twirled romance with several girls at the same time, not intending to burden himself with serious relationships. Denise Maria Dragon was a native of Romania, where she was born in 2001, in the family of Emil and Daniela Dragon. The parents of the girl at the time of her birth were still very young and were in a difficult financial situation. Due to the circumstances, they were forced to go to work in Spain, leaving their little girl in the care of grandparents. A few years later, when the couple were able to legalize in a foreign country, get a good job, and more or less establish their everyday life, they took their little daughter to their home in sunny Spain. The girl quickly settled in and made friends in her new place. She found it easy to learn the language and at school, she got high marks in almost all subjects. In addition, the little girl took an interest in dancing, willingly spent several hours a day in the studio, and regularly participated in all kinds of competitions. When the girl was in middle school, the marriage of her parents gave a crack, and they decided to separate. After the divorce, the child was left to live with her mother, but her father, despite the fact that he had a new family, continued to take care of her in all ways, supported communication, helped financially, and in every way tried to take part in the life of his daughter. Soon her mother also remarried, and a year later, the girl had a younger brother whom she adored and spent a lot of time with. At the age of 16, Denise decided that she wanted to master the art of hairdressing and become a stylist. She left her studies and dance classes, focusing entirely on her new hobby. Her parents did not discourage her or somehow prevent her, allowing her daughter to make her own choice. To gain experience, Denise got a job in a beauty salon which belonged to her relatives. The third heroine of this dramatic story, and the final link in the love triangle, was a 19-year-old girl named Rocio Martinez. She was born and raised in the suburbs of Madrid. Her father was a policeman who was transferred to Alcorcón, where his whole family moved. Rocio from childhood was impulsive, scandalous, and sometimes even aggressive. She was used to always get what she wants, and did not tolerate rejection. Even at an early age, the girl was diagnosed with diabetes and serious heart problems because of which she had to take medication on a regular basis to monitor her regimen and diet. But her health problems didn't keep her from bad company and experimenting with illegal substances. She consumed alcohol, tried drugs, and repeatedly took part in petty thefts and robberies together with her friends. However, thanks to her police officer father and his connections, Martinez was never prosecuted for her actions. Rocio believed in her impunity and that no matter what she did, her father would get her out of trouble. In addition, Rocio was quite beautiful. She always had a lot of admirers and admirers. When Denise left school and started working as a stylist, she had more free time, which she devoted to socializing with friends. Since high school, she had a best friend named Sylvia, to whom Denise confided all her secrets and worries. 
One day, on a spring evening in 2018, walking around the city with her friend, the young lady accidentally met Mario, a handsome and cheerful guy, immediately managed to charm Denise. A conversation started between them, and in the evening of the same day, they exchanged phone numbers. Soon, the young people had an affair. They saw each other almost daily, and their relationship developed rapidly. For the first time in her life, Denise truly fell in love, and her chosen one seemed to be her ideal. It also turned out that they had many common interests. They liked the same movies, the same music. They both adored dogs and dreamed of traveling the world. Just a few days after meeting, Denise invited her chosen one to a family dinner to introduce him to her mother. But Daniela did not approve of her daughter's choice. The woman immediately did not like Denise's lover. Something in him alerted her and even frightened her. Mother hastily made inquiries about him and was horrified when she learned that Mario is associated with the trade in illegal drugs. Daniela had a serious talk with her daughter, hoping that she would end her relationship with a guy with such a dubious reputation. Denise calmed her mother and promised her that she would break up with her lover. But in fact, she continued to meet with him. Quite quickly, Denise realized that Mario is not as nice and kind as he wants to seem. The young man tried to control every step of his passport, wanted to know where she goes and with whom she communicates, without permission took her phone and checked accounts and social networks. For several months, the girl in love hoped that her chosen one would change and they could build a strong and lasting relationship, but it only got worse. Mario began to consider her his property, which he can dispose of and who must do everything only as he says. At the moment when Denise seriously considered breaking off the relationship, she was horrified to realize that she was pregnant. She didn't want to tie her life to this man and endure constant harassment. Besides, Denise was afraid that now Mario wouldn't leave her alone at all. On top of that, she was only 17 years old, and she herself was simply not ready for. Motherhood and responsibility for a new little life. Then Denise decided to talk frankly with her mother and told her everything, asking for advice on how to proceed. The woman listened to her daughter and recommended her to terminate the pregnancy, adding that the choice in any case will remain only for her. Denise thought it over once more and then followed her mother's advice by having an abortion. When Tapanara found out about it, he was furious. The guy thought that Denise betrayed him, that she had no right to do so, and only he could decide what to do with this child. Relationships finally broke down, but the young man was not going to let Denise go and leave her alone. Moreover, he promised to take revenge on her for such betrayal and to hurt her as much as she hurt him. When Denise called her father in tears and told him about everything, Emil decided that his daughter needed to get away from all these difficult events that had shaken her peace of mind and go somewhere on vacation. He paid for his ex-wife and daughter a trip to one of the fashionable European resorts where they went together. The vacation really did Denise good. She calmed down a little, relaxed, began to make plans for life again, and seemed to no longer think about Mario. But the vacation was over, and Denise returned home again. Mario did not long pine for his former passport, and almost immediately began an affair with 19-year-old Rocio Martinez. This fiery, aggressive, and conflicted girl was the complete opposite of the quiet and calm Denise. She could make a scandal in the same place, go into a fight, or throw a tantrum. Rossio also experimented with illegal substances and could easily break the law, knowing that she would not be punished for it. With Mario, they quickly got together and had fun together because the guy could get any illegal drug she asked for, wanting to test its effect on himself. However, Mario couldn't forget and let go of his ex-girlfriend. He still wanted to control her, to know where she was and what she was doing. Periodically, he wrote to her in social networks, called her, and even offered to resume the relationship. Denise, who had a very hard time with this breakup, met him from time to time and communicated with him, but was not going to reunite because of fear. When Martinez found out that her boyfriend was communicating with his ex, she made a terrible scandal and, in a fit of rage, screamed that she would kill them both. By that time, Mario had already realized what his chosen one was capable of, so he promised her that it would not happen again. However, Rocio, such an answer did not calm down, and she decided to destroy her rival, if not physically, then morally. Rocio began to call Denise, showering her with insults and wishing her a speedy death. But this was not enough, and she began to send messages to her rival with threats of violent reprisals. 
However, Dragon considered these threats to be empty words and did not consider it necessary to contact the police because of them. During that period, Rossio became pregnant, about which the first thing she wrote to her rival, saying that this child is desired and she will keep it. For Denise, this news was a painful blow, but soon Martinez, due to poor health and addiction to illegal substances, lost the child, and all her anger she again poured out in a new threatening message to Denise. Denise, eager to start a new life and soon forget about Mario, started an affair with a young man named Evan. The couple legalized their relationship just a month after meeting, and the young lady went to live in her husband's house. Apparently, Mario was hurt that his ex-girlfriend had married someone else so quickly. He started looking for meetings with her again, calling and texting her. In November 2018, when Mario and Rossio were having dinner at a small diner on the outskirts of the city, the guy went out for a while, leaving his phone on the table. Rossio, taking advantage of the moment, decided to check it out. There, she came across the calls and messages Mario had been sending to Denise. Martinez immediately threw a tantrum. She screamed, cried, and tried to hit her young man. In response, Mario offered his girlfriend to personally clarify relations with Denise, to which she immediately agreed. He drove the furious Rossio to the new home of his former lover and pointed to the right door. Rossio got out of the car with a knife and went to the doorstep of her rival. At the time, Evan had not yet returned from work, and his young wife was home alone, talking on the phone with her friend Sylvia. When she heard a knock on the door, she assumed it was her husband and simply opened the door without looking through the peephole. Denise was still talking to her friend, so she could hear everything that happened next. When Denise saw her ex-lover's friend on the doorstep, she only had time to say her name in surprise and loudly before she was stabbed in the stomach. After that, Rossio immediately left, and the wounded Denise, losing consciousness, asked her friend to call an ambulance and told her who attacked her. Dragon was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Doctors fought desperately for her life for several hours, but the wound was too deep. She lost a lot of blood, and it was alas impossible to save her. After Rossio dealt the fatal blow to her rival, she ran back to the car, jumped into the cabin, and told Mario to get out of here. On the way, she confessed everything to him, and together they disposed of the crime weapon and washed the traces of blood off her hands and clothes. Mario decided it would be best for them to hide for a while. He called his relatives who lived in another city and asked them to visit. When they arrived, the relatives noticed that Rossio looked strange and was very nervous, but she wrote it off as malaise. The couple stayed overnight at Mario's relative's house, thinking about what to do and how to proceed. When they learned the next morning that Denise had died from the wound, Rossio immediately called her father and told him everything. She was sure that her dad would use all his connections to save her from jail. This time, however, the policeman father did not help his daughter who had taken another man's life. He followed her to another city and then handed her over to the police himself. One of the main witnesses in the case was Sylvia, who at the time of the crime spoke to the deceased on the phone. The case file also included numerous threatening messages that Rossio had sent to her rival over the course of several months. The defendant initially tried to deny her guilt, but all the facts and evidence were against her. Then Rossio apparently began to lose her nerve, and she confessed to everything, giving a detailed account of the attack. She noted that it was Mario who pushed her to do it, who drove her to the victim's house, and allowed her to take the knife that was in the car. Rossio suggested that he wanted to take revenge on Denise with her hands. Surprisingly, Topinar himself was only a witness in the case, not an accomplice. He completely denied his guilt and said that he only brought Rossio to his ex-girlfriend's house so that they could finally work things out and stop feuding. He also said he didn't realize Rossio had a knife and didn't see any blood on her hands or clothes when she returned to his car. At the next court hearing, the couple again denied their guilt, saying this time that they were not at the scene at all. Allegedly, they had spent the entire evening at Mario's relative's house and Denise had been fatally stabbed by someone else. Martinez claimed that she had no hatred for her rival and had no motive to kill her. Nevertheless, Rossio's guilt was proven and she went to prison for 18 and a half years. But Mario remained completely unpunished. He almost immediately spun a new novel and, forgetting about any caution, began to brag that the girls for him are ready to kill each other. He told in detail about the events of that tragic evening and this information quickly reached the parents of the dead Denise. 
The Dragon family again appealed to the court, demanding to punish the man who was responsible for the death of their daughter. And this time, Taponro was taken into custody. But after a few days, the guy was released on his own recognizance. In the end, he was acquitted, and he was released again. Denise's parents tried several times to appeal the court decision, demanding to increase the term for Rossio and to put Mario in jail as an accomplice. However, to this day, Mario has not been brought to justice. Thanks for watching, guys. That was Jack with you. Subscribe to the channel. There are many shocking stories ahead. I'll see you guys again.